Welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest Methodist Church in the world. Thank you so much for coming today. I really, really appreciate your time together. Thank you for people who are worshiping with us online. May the Spirit of God be with you. My name is Watanak. It is my privilege and honor to be your pastor. Let us worship. And friends, as we start our worship service, I would like to invite the acolytes to come down with the light of Christ. Here where there is people of God coming together to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God is with us. I pray that you are in the spirit of prayer and worship, and I pray that this service will feed you, will encourage you, will connect you with the Spirit of God, and that you will become good and faithful disciples better and better every time. Amen. Let's stand for the procession of the palms this morning as we sing United Methodist Hymnal uh, 278, Hosanna, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. We're going to hit it, burn. Oh, 
My name is Ruby Bango, and I'm your liturgist this morning, and I'm one of the youth leaders working with our youth group ages 12 to 19. So we have our Hanging Out with Jesus every Wednesday, and we invite you, if you are in this youth group, this Wednesday we will be meeting at church. We will not have our Zoom meeting this Wednesday. So happy Palm Sunday, everyone. For our brothers and sisters online, happy Palm Sunday. Hosanna, blessed is the one who, who <coughs> blessed is the king who comes in the name of Jesus. Amen. Join me in our call to worship. Honor. Honor and praise. Uh, honor, praise, and glory. Honor. In celebration, we join the crowds of old. Waving branches, giving honor to the Messiah. Yet our celebration is bittersweet, for our story doesn't end here. We know the pain of what lies ahead. Today anticipates the rest of the story. A story of betrayal and death, a story of hope and resurrection. Please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, All Glory, Loud and Honor.
prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For our scripture reading, I, in, I invite you again, if you are able, to stand up. And our scripture reading this morning is in Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tie there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he has told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sat Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks. So let us now invite the children to please come forward. Hey guys, how are you? It's good to see you this morning. Wow. How are you guys? Did you have a good week? We heard on scripture today that Jesus sent his um, disciples to get the, the colt, huh? Well, today is Palm Sunday, and I thought we would have a praise parade. Have you ever been to a parade? Yeah. Would you like? I want to take one. You want one of those? And I've got these. Anyways, we're going to do a praise parade this morning. What would you like? What would you like? Take one. Take one. Oh. Did you get it? You want that one? You want one of these? Here, guys. Right. Did you see those words where they said, where, where Ruby said, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who came in the name of the Lord? Beautiful. These make noise. These right here make noise. Watch. So can you guys help me make some noise? Let's stand up. Let's go have a 
parade. Come on, let's go. Let's say Hosanna in the highest. Just try again, baby, on this side, right there. Blow hard. Hosanna. Let's go, guys. Hosanna on the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna on the highest. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us. Hosanna on the highest. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna on the highest. All righty. All righty. You can keep those. They're all yours. How was our parade? Do you think Jesus liked our parade? Did you figure it out? Good job. Well, he doesn't want to stay with me. Anyways, we heard that we heard that Jesus had the disciples go get a colt that has never been ridden. And they threw all the, the their cloaks on the ground and on the donkey so he could have a safe ride. And you're my music maker, huh? Um, anyways, so Jesus, they brought the donkey, or the colt, I'm so sorry, and rode into town. The same people that were hollering, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. A week later, they turned against him. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think that's a good thing? <coughs> that the people would turn against Jesus. That wouldn't be good, huh? Well, we did our celebration today in praising God. So, do you think Jesus enjoyed our parade? Yes. Yeah. All right. How about we say a prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for being with us. We hear the voices joining us from 2,000 years ago. Please be with us and guide us and Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. All right, guys. Have some fun. All right. What a parade. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, fun one. Set me your name in the land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name.
They put a lot of time together, choosing the songs, writing the song, not writing the song, but choosing the song and playing the song and practice and all that. It's amazing. Don't you like it? How many of you enjoyed the worship today? Yeah? I'm glad you were here. If you were here for the first time after a long time, I pray that you feel uh, comfortable at home. I pray that this is a good place for you and that you will come back. Right? All right. So... Before I start my sermon, I usually tell a little funny story just to loosen us up a little bit, right? So this is a story about a Sunday school teacher teaching the kids about uh, the Good Samaritan, right? A Jew walked by and then got beat up down on the street, wounded and, 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 and bleeding and everything, and then the Samaritan come and help the, uh, the guy, bring him to the, the inn, to the hotel, and pay for everything. So now the teacher asked the, to, the, to the kids, to the group, saying, hey guys, so what would you do if you see a person wounded and blood bleeding on the street? The little Margie said, I would throw up. Oh! Oi, oi, oi. Well, what come out of the little girl, huh? little, little, little kid's mouth? Well, anyway, friends, I hope you will just um, take it as a funny story. All right. Now I invite you all to, to close your eyes. Breathe deeply and slowly. Wherever you are right now, just sit comfortably. Find your feet on your floor. Adjust your seating posture. Drop your shoulder from your chins. Relax all your facial muscles. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly. Knowing that the Spirit of God is with us all. That we are here not by accident, but we are here by divine appointment. Let us now go to God in time of silent prayer. Whatever you have, please talk to God. Or maybe this time is a time for you to just listen. And God may be speaking to you right now. So let's join with me in a time of silent prayer for a minute or so. Lord Jesus, receive our praise and worship, Lord, as we are here today to worship you, to get connected with you, to sing praise, and to just give it all back to you, Lord. Lord, today we, we bow our heads, we close our eyes, we surrender our lives to you. We acknowledge that you are God and you reign. We ask that you will continue to lead and guide each and every one of us. As we come together today to just offer our all to you, Lord, may you accept it, direct it, and lead it, and so we can live life to the full according to your plan, so that we can continue to grow, to become more and better faithful disciples for you, Lord. And as we gather here today, Lord, we also remember our friends and our loved ones, for those who are traveling, 
for those who are saved from the, from the accident, for those who might be going through some depression or stressful situation, financial situation, or maybe uh, things that is happening at work or at home, Lord, we pray that your spirit continue to be each and every one of us wherever we are. Lord, remind each and every one of us that we can always come to you. You are a prayer away. You are a thought away. And you are always with us. And your love and your forgiveness, your kindness, your mercy is always abundant for each and every one of us. Lift us up, Lord, as we are seeking for encouragement. Send us your angels, Lord, that, that some people, people who are, who are there for us, who can be shoulder for us to just lean on. Those who can be ears for us to talk to. And today, Lord, as we are contemplating on the word, as we are worshiping you, may the word of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you because you are our rock and you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, before we go into our today's scripture, let us remember to forgive one another. Let us remember to share our love to one another. Let us remind ourselves that God will love us regardless, right? What do I love to say? I love you, and Jesus loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Are you ready for this? One, two, three. I love you, Jesus loves you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Amen? Amen. That's what we do together. Let, we, let us remind each other that God is amazing. God is good. And we want to be the messenger of love, to share love for one another, to forgive each other all the time. Amen? So today, we are on the wonderful Sunday, Palm Sunday, triumphal entry, celebrating, celebrate, celebrating the victory of Christ coming into Jerusalem. We are waving palm branches. We are saying hallelujah. We are saying hosanna, hosanna in the highest. How many of you have said hosanna before? Let's say it together. Hosanna, hosanna, hosanna in the highest. We prepare ourselves throughout these weeks, during the Lent season, to prepare for the coming, for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remind ourselves when Jesus went into the, to the wilderness, Jesus said, I come here full with the Spirit. The Word of God is with me. That man is not living just by bread alone, but we live by the Word, the Word of God. And then we also remember that in the book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 38 it says, I have longed to gather your children together as the hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Jesus is like our mother. Jesus is like our God. Jesus is like our father who would do everything possible to protect, to take care of the chicks. That no matter what we are going through, we can always go back to God. He is only a prayer away. He will do everything possible to keep you away from the storm, to keep you away from from the fire to keep you away from the danger. The mother, the mother hen will even sacrifice her life for the sake of the children as well. How important are we? How precious are we? If Jesus is with us right now, he would say, you are my precious. I would do everything for you. And then there's a story of the master gardener who come to the garden and saw a fig tree that is not producing. And then the master told the gardener saying that, hey, if this fig tree is not producing, why don't we cut it down? But then the gardener representing Jesus, telling, speaking back to the master saying, please give me another chance, sir. Let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. God is the God of the many chances. There's no way that God will abandon you. There will no way that God will cut you away. But God will toy, will seek help, will put manure, will put fertilizer, and that you will produce. I love to tell the story because that is like the story of our church. 
through all the last few years, through the pandemic, through the decline, through the problem that's going on, we were like, oh, what is going on? How can we continue to, to be the disciples, the group of believers, the faithful believer, the faith community that we want to be? But God said, I'm going to give you another chance. We're going to keep moving. We're going to do this together. And God is going to flourish. And then our community of faith will continue to grow and produce fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then we heard this wonderful classic story. The story of the, the prodigal son. The one who left the family. How many of you have heard about this story? You all have heard about this story. Some of you probably experienced the prodigal children in your family, right? Somebody who just didn't follow through, didn't really listen, didn't really obey, gone through different situations and decided to do his thing. That is probably not a good decision. But then the most important part of the story is when the son understands that his condition is not even as good as the servant of the father's home. He said, I'm going back home. When he came back home, the father, the loving father, the merciful father, the forgiving father, the good, the best father that you can ever find, say, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoe on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this is my son who was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now is found. Wow. What a God that we are worshiping. Do you see this? He loves us regardless. Sometimes we make cuckoo decisions, but God will welcome you like a king. Why does the story say, well, let's bring him shoe, let's bring him rope, let's bring him ring. This is when you ordain a king. You want to give everything to the king. You will treat that person as special as possible. You will kill the best calf to celebrate, to have party. That is your God, friend. When you are coming back to the kingdom of God, when you decide to connect yourself to God, God will look back at you and smile at you and say, Welcome, my beloved. You are so precious. We really need you. The Lord needs each and every one of you, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are or how young you are, no matter what ethnicity you are, no matter what skin color you have, God needs each and every one of you. Last Sunday, we heard another classic story, very classic, of this girl who gave everything to God. He loved Jesus so very much because Jesus resurrected her brother. Now Jesus is in her place. She poured the most expensive perfume on his feet to anoint him, to say that Jesus is king. I'm going to worship him. I cannot touch him. Guess what? I'm going to use my hair to wipe his feet because he deserves all. He deserves everything from me. And I love him so very much. And Jesus said, that's what you should do. If you call yourself the follower of Christ, you give everything at all. You love him and from the bottom of your heart. Everything, you don't care. You don't mind. You will belong to the kingdom of God and you will give everything. That's the most important part. Nothing else is, is important. Forget about the hosting part. Forget about the party. Forget about everything else. But focus on this moment as you are worshiping God. Today, after we heard all this wonderful story of who our God is, what he has done throughout his ministry, his loving kindness, his care, his mercy, his forgiveness, now today we are hearing the story of the triumphal entry. Everybody loves Jesus. Everybody is looking for forward looking for the coming of Christ that he will be king that he will lead the people that he will continue to reign that the kingdom of God is here on this place 
people were so eager. They want to see the face of Christ. The Bible said Jesus is now in Bethany, the Garden of Olives, the Olive Garden. If you were standing in Jerusalem and you look at the Garden of Olive, the, olive, the, the Mount of Olive, that's what you see. That's the Mount of Olive right there. Now there's a church of all nations down there that you can go and, you know, see the, the structure or the statue, Jesus going through the agony and all that. But this is the Mount of Olive. And if you stand on the Mount of Olive, looking back into Jerusalem, this is what you see. You will see the temple, which is right now the Dome of the Rock, right? You will see Jerusalem. You will see the city, right? Now Jesus is on this Mount of Olive, ready to march into Jerusalem. And this is the most important part that I want you to hear. When Jesus was ready to go in, Jesus told us, the disciples, go, untie it and bring it here. Untie it and bring it here. What does that speak to you, friends? When I read this scripture, Jesus is talking to me. I am tying myself into something. I am tying myself into my burden. Maybe I'm tying myself into the debt. Maybe I'm tying myself into the hardship. Maybe I'm tying myself into the complacency of this world. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm tying myself into these excuses of not being able to come back to God, of not being able to come to God, to connect with God. And God is telling me, telling each and every one of you, untie it, untie it, come back, bring it here to God. Think about your situation right now. What are you tying yourself to? God is calling you, each and every one of you, untie it, untie it. Why don't you tell your neighbor right now? Talk to your neighbor, turn to your neighbor and tell them, untie it, untie it. Go ahead right now. Tell your neighbor, untie it, untie it. Come on, let's talk to your neighbor. Untie it, untie it. You know what? You know what? Jesus said, go and untie the coat. Untie it, bring it here. You know why? You know why? Because the Lord needs it. Because the Lord needs it. The Lord needs each and every one of you. Untie it, whatever situation you're in, whatever hardship you're in. Maybe you are being discouraged. Maybe you are, you are not being valued. Maybe you are very stressful. Maybe you are very depressed. Jesus is saying, untie it. Come here. I need you. I need each and every one of you. Some of you may be, may be saying, well, I'm very young. I don't know. What does that mean? Why does the Lord need me for? Remember, the Lord needs each and every one of you. Every one of you. Some of you may say, well, you know, what, what, what difference do I make if I come to church? If I don't come to church, what does that make? I'm only one person. The Lord needs you. Why don't you tell each other again? Tell each other, talk to your neighbor and tell them that the Lord needs you. Come on, go, ahead, go tell each other. The Lord needs you. Friends, come to God. God has a big plan for you. God has big plan in store for you. Let us come and do this together. The Lord needs you. We are in this community of faith, yearning, seeking each other, seeking each other's help encouragement, love, kindness, hospitality, and all that, you name it. Because of what you have been doing, friends, let me tell you this. Because of what you have been doing, you have literally transformed lives. Maybe you don't know it. Maybe you're trying to think right now, what are you talking about, Pastor? Transforming life, what are you talking about? Let me tell you. One of our church members recently were going through so much so, so much hardship. Life was unbearable. It was very difficult. And she decided to untie herself from the situation. She didn't have anything. She didn't have anything. It was very hard. So now she has to leave the difficult situation, calling her mom, saying, I'm going home, mom. Mom said, wait until tomorrow. It's very dark now. It's foggy everywhere. 
Your car might not make it here. Your children might not be safe. Don't come. Wait until the morning. And she said, I cannot. It is dangerous right now. I got to go. She got up in the car, get onto the freeway. It was completely dark, and it was very foggy. The visibility was almost nothing. She was praying that she was going to come to mommy safe. Listen to this. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, there were two semi-trucks. Two semi-trucks cut her, one in the front and one in the back. And these two semi-trucks has this great light and just keep following her. And she said, that's great. Now I can see I'm going to just keep following this truck. And she keep following the truck until there was no longer foggy. It was no longer foggy. And then she saw the exit. And the exit was to Fresno. And she got to her mom safe and sound. Not just only to her mom. She got to Memorial United Methodist Church. And she said, Memorial United Methodist Church, the greatest United Methodist Church in the world. That is where she finds love. That's where she finds community. That's where she finds hospitality. That's where she finds family. And now her life is so much better. It totally transformed. Friend, I'm telling you this story. This is the real story. And I got the permission to tell the story. I mean, listen, friends. The Lord needs you. Because of your presence, because of your contribution, because of who you are, you are literally transforming life. The Lord needs your youthfulness. The Lord needs your wisdom. The Lord needs your occupation. The Lord needs your presence. The Lord needs your smile. The Lord, the Lord needs your encouragement. The world is getting better and better each and every day because you untie from whatever it is come to god knowing that god has big things in store for you and the lord needs you now friends we all are with jesus celebrating his triumphal entry into the kingdom of God with whatever we have friends you don't need money you don't need Mercedes Benz you don't need nice house you don't need big car to celebrate God all you need is palm branches and cloak and whatever it is Jesus does not need a Mustang to come into the city Jesus does not need a big horse to come into the city he was on a colt coming into the city to celebrate the triumphal entry of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the ministry of our God. And we, after the COVID-19, we are now celebrating the victory of God, what God has done into each and every one of us, in, into our community, with whatever we have, palm branches, wearing the palm branches, whatever cloak we have, whatever gift we have, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs it. I invite you to sing with me, friends. Do you have palm branches? I have some palm branches. Yeah, wave the palm branches. Let's sing this song with me, all right? That is amazing. Now we are coming into the, we enter into the, the gate. We are going to wave the palm branch and we will sing. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Hey, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Hey, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. You will rejoice, you will celebrate, because God is with you all. And you have to remember, you got to untie from everything. Come back to God, bring it to God, because the Lord needs it. Thank you so much, friend, for coming today. I pray that the Spirit of God is with you. I pray that you have been encouraged, that you've been nudged, that you're going to decide to move forward with the love of Christ. You know, when Christ called his disciples together, the, 13, the 12 disciples come, to, come, come together into the upper room. Before the dinner starts, they come for a big time of dinner. Jesus took the bread and broke the bread, 
gave thanks to God and gave to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. After the dinner, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to God, and gave to the disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink from this cup for the forgiveness of your sin. Friends, when you come in, you were given the communion element. May the Spirit of God be with you. Open the first layer, eat the uh, wafer, knowing that God, the body of Christ, broken for you. And then you can drink the juice, remembering the blood of Christ shed for you. You are forgiven. You are forgiven indeed. Friends, as you are doing this, I invite you to spend this time in contemplative prayer as Lee Chai, Jordan, and Emily will help us, lead us into a song that we will sing together. will play and why you to to pray to think about the grace of God the mercy and the forgiveness of God you may want to use the communion rail to come and kneel down and pray or you can go to the candlelight station light a candle representing the light of Christ shining wherever there is darkness let's take this time seriously allowing God to speak to you to change you and to transform you
lives within your heart. What a wonderful song. Thank you so much, Emily, Jordan, and Ali Chai, and Joe is helping with the sound over there. That's amazing. Thank you. Friends, I pray that once again, God touch you wherever you are. Let me say this. Thank you so much for your love, your generosity, your support to this wonderful ministry. Without your presence, your treasure, and your talents, we cannot do what we are doing today. We cannot transform life one person at a time. So please, I ask that you will continue to help, support, and you know, be generous to the ministry of our church as we are going to, to, to help this world to become a better place. People who are worshiping with us online, I also ask that you support us. You can give by aiming your camera into this QR code. You will be able to go into our website that you can donate on our website as well. Thank you so much for your love. Now I ask that you would join with me in a time of Thanksgiving prayer. Let's say the Thanksgiving prayer together. What can we offer that you have not already offered us? What can we do that you have not already done for us? Lord Jesus Christ, in your gifts to us, you have provided us the way to live and serve you. In both your triumph and your suffering, you deserve our praise. Through the gifts we now offer, we express our longing to serve and to follow wherever you go. Amen. If you, come, if you feel comfortably able, please stand for a time of doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And friends, because our time is up, I would like to offer the benediction. After the benediction, our children will play the, the chime. And after the chime, when the chime is playing, I invite you to be quiet, to be contemplative to the chime choir. And after that, they will strip down the altar. And we will leave this place in a quiet moment, all right? Leave this place preparing ourselves for next coming Sunday as we are celebrating Easter together. The Spirit of God is with you wherever you are. When you leave this place, please remember, the Spirit of God will continue to go with you wherever you are. So may you live, live knowing that God is with you, that you are the messenger of love, that you will bring courage and encouragement to everybody around you, that the world will become brighter wherever you are, that you will shine the light of Christ to everyone around you. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Thank you so much, man. I invite you to sit down. Let us pay attention to our children's camp choir. And after that, we will leave the place silently as the children will come and strip down to the altar. <laughs> 